So, um, for the new people that are here, we have a little way of starting it off. So, I think everybody else remembers, so we'll do that now. So when the fit, when the hand goes up, that's when we stop. We good? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. It is not love, nor its siblings. We seek their mother. We have been commissioned by their dead father to find her. We know not where she may be, yet we all know of her children. Those all too famous lovers, who in manic turn to those all too famous dualities, meditating in all those buildings being adored. But what of their mother? We know she has been felt in the neverwhere, depressed and terrified of being found. She is immortal and can't figure out what to do, having birth detailed dimensions. Long ago, she had faith in exhaustion. Yet her mate, who died from the magic of Phoenix and Owl, begs Copper to pass this on. I was never her mate. I only showed her the tree <laughs> The children flowed forth from The amber key Wild animals tell her this often Yet she refuses her ear In a mute trance she stares Anticipating laughter If ever Whomever will supply her that gift she will anoint with the immortal kiss. In an indigo explosion, <laughs> a god is born. <laughs> Knowing only shapes, it journeys on in narrow caves that beg to be. In an emerald gash, a god is born that lives to challenge. Behind broken glass and smoked air, it tells a tale of the neverwhere. And there, animals who are men kill themselves over and over again to find the way out and into themselves. It is a door which we seek. It is a door <laughs> full of indigo, full of emerald, <laughs> full of ember. Enchanted. They all yell wild melodies, dancing out through the amber, some turning into man, others into animal, then into stone, wood, or mud. Concealing themselves layer upon layer upon layer upon layer until some wild haunted artist finds their quarry. <laughs> then slowly they reveal themselves. God speaking to artists about themselves. <laughs> be a thousand years old, hands woven over knee, over knee, blinking smoke, mm. every wrinkle answering, every question ever asked. <laughs> he will be a thousand years old, <laughs> eyes swollen over sharp cheek stone. Hearing smoke dance. Every dance. <laughs> to every song 
ever sung, he will be a thousand years old now. Ash mouth, a tongue of fire, chanting silence, laughing about every rhythm on every branch, on every tree. <laughs> he will be a thousand years old now. Obscure, forgotten, but still blinking, hearing, chanting, laughing about everything everybody holds. He was a thousand years old, and no thing, sorry, and no one, not even him, noticed. Not in eyes alone is dance never enough. More even in those collected things. First holler of the new church belling all around it, charging, relenting, moving floor, stomping. Let me in. Then let me out. This shaking thing, sleeping, needing that other thing to bang back. When it does, it is not in the eyes alone. It is in the room, being everything. Everyone that knows, knows when to answer. <laughs> Where there are caves, till, till songs sound fuller. Where there are caves, the moon is closer. Where there are caves, dancers laugh harder. Where there are caves, notes hold longer. Where there are caves, no dog has a leash. Where there are caves, the blind appear to see. Where there are caves, the rock is old. And cave dwellers express the stories the caves have told. There are gods sealed behind glass. Notice them so they may live. No marker may declare where heaven ends, for heaven's beings have been here, standing in forests, singing with deer. Gods who lurk berserk in narrow caves, hovering, deciding not to speak, locked in a world buried deep. Until in museums, in objects, surrounded by glass, their beings dull, their purpose no longer grasped. Yet once you notice, you will feel their beings glow in a mind that finds departure. Then you can speak with them on the soul's harbor. For even though archaeologists found their form, they know nothing of the key that allows them to be reborn. Declare our wish in the wild of the night. Sleepless fish standing upright, divining in that ancient turquoise light. Our wish is simple, so it arrives a bit late. Nothing but words we carve into humid air, inhaling. Exhaling, contracting, expanding into wet wings. Separated, they swim into our ears. 
Landing on leaves to sit in a lotus becoming dew. Noticing these tears brought forth from the muse, we drink them and enter the neverwhere. Somewhere in the neverwhere, something awaits us, anxious to recreate us. In there, all things will take us into a place that escapes states to fate us. Over there, in the neverwhere, a thing will speak, resonating while tuning our threads. That thing will know us by tone and speak to us until through us it is shown. We chant for something detailed and deep. Endless premise, no plot, no thought, no speech. Silent facts full of what must be, providing powerless powers, that of Persephone. We sing for iridescent entities to take hold, throwing us into ancient galaxies but never letting go. We cry for gods whose names go unknown now, gods who brought this existence to exist, never innocent beauties who live in the catacombs of our DNA, doing nothing aloud, answering no destiny, looking only for an audience to demand their wild ramblings. <laughs> what wild thing begs of me to set forth my flames, my waters, my winds, my nothings, my aims? What wild wizard combines this and that? and is not satisfied with how the solution reacts. What whimsical wit howls for my grace, my smell, my touch, my sight, my taste. What wild wolf craves my ember? Us, my goddess, the lost thoughts, now remembered. <laughs> Well, it is a cold amber that holds me here. A cold amber that keeps that secret near. It is a cold amber that misses its tree. A cold amber that in the dark with the spark from the cocoon my knocks me offer oh, amber into your eyes if you dare to witness an apparition approach draped in sickness marry me if you wish to travel I'd marry you if to me you were tangible strong alchemy is necessary to induce our shift. Fire informs the chaos that will permit your new form to form, which will allow our embrace to exist. I married my god, <laughs> and she was not impressed. I offered her my soul. <laughs> she refused my gesture. I begged her to stay. She left me still. There I stood until I could not feel. There the mind answered my prayer, yelling, move through all those layers. Nymphs danced around, pouring liquor on my fire, singing blues in my indigo, spit, spitting blood on my necro, hollering at haints, throwing dirt on my grave, pouring amber in my chest until I was born again as the star that brought forth the day.
And this last one is for Tapius. Um, Tapius is an amazing painter, thing thrower. And uh, Tapius, who one of those people that could not die, decided to elevate into another world to throw mud at the sky. It's also for Gaudi and everybody else and everything else, and then we don't wrap this. But in this dimension, we speak to our Father about Osiris's intent. We discuss the numbers. We ask Horus what he meant. We sing to Ra until Aten responds. The deers come eventually. One cosmic, the other earth. Those deers come singing of the omniverse. They are invisible people who speak nonetheless. Reiterating Socratic secrets, Heidegger overlooked. Tapius throws clay and marble dust at us. None lands on the trees. The ground sounds tambourines. Ghosts dance, telling tales of Moors who told them about us. My mother in the distance dances the dervish, throwing money at stars who flicker from the intention, laughing all night about us. For they love who we haven't been. Hathor twirls under the eastern star, pointing at its rays, just like grandmother before, who kept singing Isis hymns and knitting what all those stars had to relay. Yet, no races ran, and it never will be. I whisper with Pan of a land that won't be. I study thoughts, every thought, about Tehu's secret base. We know no delight other than that same light which Gaudi obtained and set in place. Thank y'all.